Uh, the airbag uh, concept came about because of the recognition of a essentially a need in the aviation community. There is a certain area in aviation safety that has been somewhat lacking. What you'll see is a very slow deployment. Typically the deployment occurs between 52 to 58 milliseconds, which is faster than the blink of the eye. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to kind of simulate that you're in a crash condition. The sensor has detected that it's supposed to deploy the bag, and I will use our demonstrator here. I'm going to arm the system. I'll say three, two, one, and press, and the bag will deploy. Unlike an automobile airbag that has a reaction surface, and I think we all understand that sometimes an automobile airbag can be injurious to an occupant, the, the M-Safe seatbelt airbag assembly airbag has no reaction surface. It comes up in front of the occupant and away from the occupant. And therefore, as the occupant translates into the bag, the bag then provides the protection between the occupant and the monuments in the aircraft. Also, we had to show by FAA requirement that as the bag inflates, it also will deflate in a timely manner such that the occupant can quickly egress the aircraft. By requirement, we had to demonstrate that was less than 10 seconds. As soon as the bag inflates, it essentially begins to deflate. What happens is the gas begins to escape, but it cannot escape so fast that it does not provide the necessary protection. Also, another important thing of the bag deflating quickly is that it does not provide what we call rebound. If it was providing rebound like hitting a beach ball, that can be as hazardous to the occupant as hitting a solid object. So, I'm going to do this deployment here. All right, you all set? Yes, sir. Good, all right. Three, two, one, and again, you're going to see a very slow uh, demonstration of a deployment. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Three, two, one. Immediately, I'm holding this button down just to let the air of our demonstrator come out. Immediately, the bag begins to deflate. And in fact, this one even has a hole in the bag to allow deflation. And this then allows the individual to, to egress the aircraft. The operation of the system is totally transparent to the um, user. In other words, it's, there's no difference than a normal restraint system. The occupant can easily egress the aircraft and make his way out of the aircraft. One of the things I like about the general design is its adaptability. They're, you're obviously talking about customizing it to each airframe, but it doesn't sound like customizing to any unique airframe is going to be that difficult. When we do a system uh, for an aircraft, uh, interestingly enough, basic components or what we call the core components really don't change. The core components include the electronics module assembly, which is the sensor. Uh, the interface cable which goes from the sensor to the inflator, the inflator, mm -hmm. those things are common to uh, almost any product uh, we develop today. What does change and what is unique to the application is the restraint system depending upon a, a two-point, a three-point or a four-point restraint, the bag size and shape, mm -hmm. and this obviously is necessary because for general aviation aircraft, those aircraft uh, interiors change, right? whether it's a tandem seat placement or it's a side-by-side. -side. Um, we are in the, currently in the process of, uh, we have already uh, started doing what we call legacy aircraft, the older aircraft that did not have to meet their current head injury criteria. And in that case, the airbag obviously provides additional protection uh, where even that protection is not required. Um, Accordingly, what we do then is we literally get an airframe uh, of, let's say, a Piper PA-28, and uh, we run it down our dynamic sled in Phoenix, Arizona, with the anthropomorphic dummies mm -hmm. on board, and we do the development of the airbag to address 
the particular airframe cabin size and shape. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Now, what about inadvertent deployment? We have to, by requirement, both for transport category airplanes and general aviation aircraft, Part 23 or Part 25, show that it is extremely remote that you'll have an inadvertent deployment. We also have to show that it is extremely remote that you'll have a failure mm -hmm. to deploy. Okay. So we meet those requirements. In fact, we are currently in the process of uh, uh, installing the system into agricultural aircraft. Wow, well, no, there, there's a perfect use. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're uh, in that process, So, and the FAA recognizes the need for the product in that environment. Obviously because that's the kind of environment where you would see the kind of uh, events that the airbag could be certainly very helpful in. It's been a long held search within the aviation community that it's never been safe enough and yet every time you talk to a pilot the first thing that comes out of their mouths is or hopefully out of their mouths is how to make aviation safer and what they're doing to better their lot in the event of the unforeseen. AmSafe presents a possible additional solution to the inevitable question of how safe is aviation. Maybe a little bit safer with AmSafe. For Aero News and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.